Welcome back to Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. Alright, so this guy's given us enough grief. Let's beat him up. Stop sending people after me, I don't appreciate it. Go away. It's the 55th day of this month, I'm gonna... I'm gonna get you. Gonna get your whole ass. Grief! Boss! That girl and her band of idiots are here! Uh, what the hell are the rest of the men doing? I need them here to fight! Um, it doesn't look like they're moving, boss. What? Damn it! So I've been betrayed, have I? Uh, fine. Just... fine. I'll just go out there and crush this stupid girl all by myself! Alright, so time for a chapter with exactly one enemy, and it's just, it's just gonna be Greet, that's it. No, just kidding. There's a lot of enemies. Alright, so, Greet Citadel. This is a tough fight. You're gonna want to be careful for this one. I feel like the hardest part is the beginning, though, because we're out in the desert, they're not. That being said, Greeth is extremely no slouch. Uh, he's a dread fighter, which means he's an absolute fucker. We have not promoted anyone to dread fighter yet. Uh, when we do, it'll be great. For now, though, fear them. Well, looky here! It's Sophia's crowd princess! Ain't you just fancy? How? Who told you that? Well, let me think a second. Who could it have been? You know what? It don't matter. Fact is, I owe you my thanks. While you royals were lounging about ignoring your own kingdom, I was becoming a very rich man. You people turned Sophia into a place where only the strong survive. Hell, now it's the spitting image of Regal itself, don't you think? You may think yourself something fine, but your days as a predator are done! Who are those women? Ugh, witches. What? This whole thing is a bit out of my realm of expertise. But, apparently, offering up your soul to Duma buys you enormous magic power. Problem is, you basically turn into a living husk sort of... Uh, thing. That's horrific! It's also why the Empire's so strong. I'm sure the Deliverance has its hands full. Um... Alright, so, like I said, uh, beginning of this chapter, pretty hard. Uh, we have to make it into the Citadel itself, and that's pretty much gonna be the biggest hurdle. They've got very good defenses, pretty good range, and just some good physical units to guard the entrance as well, so, uh, just be smart about how you divide your forces. I mean, traditionally the whole point of a Citadel is to be hard to get into. Yeah, does it quite well. Pella? Hmm? Did you need something? I just had a thought. I know it's only happenstance that brought us here, but... Well, Celica and the others are all such good people. And Valentian culture is quite interesting in its own right. Perhaps I should allow myself to enjoy being here a bit more. That's not what I expected you to say. In fact... You're the last of us I'd supposed to be having such thoughts. Is it really so out of character? <laughs> Maybe not, especially as I think your words were directed at me. And perhaps you're right. I have been rather dour lately after all. I suppose it is important to find joy wherever life happens to take you. I couldn't agree more. And I find the most joy in the smiles of my sisters. Well, that's very sweet. Alright, so yeah, uh, our Pegasus Knights are basically going to be taking the left side for the most part, including Emma, who has the conversation before we can actually do that. Oh, hello, Randall. Hey, kid. Keeping your nose clean? Of course. And you? Any secret dice games I should know about? When I said I was done with that, I meant it. Do you think I'm a liar? Mm. Stop that. You trying to burn holes in me with your eyes, or what? <laughs> no, I believe you now. You should. I'm an honest, upstanding sort of man. But I'm also bored senseless now that you shut down all my usual pastimes. So what do you do for fun? Me? Hmm. 
Come on. There's got to be something you amuse yourself with. Well, actually, I've been perfecting my solo triangle attack. Your solo what? Solo triangle attack. Um, you do understand that you need three people to make a triangle, yeah? I'm not going to take up other people's valuable time while I'm still training. But I still want to learn it, so I started practicing alone. Oh, hey, look at the time. Gotta go. Hold on, Randall. You're not taking me seriously, but the triangle attack is a legendary art. Which requires three people. Just for that, I'm making you come along next time I practice. Wait, what? Why? Because I said so. And don't you dare stand me up. <sighs> sure, kid. You got it. What have I gotten myself into? A solo triangle attack, apparently. Alright, so, yeah, uh, there's no front, uh, to go through. There's only a left and a right, so, uh, Valbar is going right. <laughs> That's his direction. We've got the very dodgy flyers going in on the left side. I'm ready for anything. Pretty much every everyone else is going to be going this way. We need a lot of physical powerhouses going in this direction. Oh god, I forgot you still haven't upgraded Atlas. I know. That's a mistake. <laughs> don't be like me. Just If you're watching this, hey, don't be like me. Please, for the love of god, make Atlas an archer. <laughs> Lady Celica! I hope you're feeling well. I often worry that you push yourself too hard. <laughs> a little scrap like this ain't nothing to worry about. Heck, I do this kind of thing to unwind. You talk like it's a tavern brawl. Though I wager the general idea is the same. More or less, yeah. So you can keep the orders coming. You saved my life, remember? Gotta do what I can to pay you back. I see. Well... Thank you, Atlas. Just please be careful, okay? Anyways, it is probably for the best that you cut out all of the uh, the dialogue where every time the, a unit gets close to the entrance, they go left or right, left or right. <laughs> and then I have to edit out the uh, failed takes where I step on the landmine, yeah. Anyways, I sure hope your audience likes the Soldier Boys riff from Red Spring. <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing that's just ancient internet history by this point. And wasn't all that popular even when it was relevant, if we're being honest. Yeah, but I also have that left or right thing. That line is also in my head, too. <laughs> I've, just, I've just got that. But I'm, I'm a collection of weird phrases that I just remember. That's why I end, like, half my conversations with, And dirt. See you in Street Fighter V, everyone. I just keep... That one's just in my brain forever. The and dirt thing is definitely one of the more noticeable ones. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, as a note on Atlas, I like Atlas as a character. Yeah, so like, we didn't get much from him in that conversation, but you know what? I, I like him as like the, the nice jock archetype. Atlas doesn't like much. He likes fighting, and he's... Well, he's got good strength, so he's good at that. He can hit very hard. But he's also just very polite. He's a very good boy, and I appreciate him for that. We're just not going to see much of him for now, because I'm not making him an archer, which, again, don't be like me. <laughs> Make him an archer. Uh, we also get to see Solo Triangle Attack here, which didn't go quite as well as it could have, but... Okay, so, like, I haven't explained Triangle Attack in this game yet because, uh, we haven't been able to see it because it normally requires three people, and normally those three people are Pegasus Knights. Solo Triangle Attack is sort of like Astra, in that you basically just have a number of attacks in a row. Uh, I explained this in the, the character bio, of course, but, like, it is pretty useful. Though it can miss, of course, that does put a bit of a dampen on it. It is just three attacks in a row, which is just real good, especially with Emma, who's just a good character overall. Also, fulfilling, you know, that that one bit in the, the uh, support conversations. 
Again, mention this in the character bios, but you can equip uh, the DLC weapons to characters who, you know, don't start with them. So technically speaking, Randall could also master the solo triangle attack. He's not going to. I'm going to keep the training lance on Emma, but, you know, he could if he wanted to. He just doesn't want to. He thinks it's absurd. One person can't make a triangle. It's impossible. Oh, wow. Good, good job, Atlas. That's, um... Well, I mean, I said you had good strength and you didn't get that either, so, um... Bowie, can you please help? I mean, that's a nice hit rate, except you did miss, though, Atlas. <laughs> Make Atlas an archer. <laughs> if there's one lesson you should learn from this video, it's just... Just make him an archer, please, God. He needs a win. So I only played through this game once, so I only played through with Atlas as an archer. Um, but you played with, through with him as also as a cavalry unit, right? Uh-huh, and he wasn't good. <laughs> he was one of the few units in this game to underperform. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> he is good at strength and nothing else. He can hit very hard, but he is somehow made of tissue paper. <laughs> yeah, and that was a better fit for, like, the skills that archers get. Yep. Because they can cover for his uh, low hit rate without... Um, preventing him from doubling because he's not going to double anyways. Yeah, he is absolutely not going to double, and just being away from a fight is just a very good strategy for him. <laughs> just do not put him in direct fire. He is a very large bag of blood, however he tears very easily. Uh, so now that we're making headway into the fort, I, I guess topic of the day is... Man, I feel like this game's best chapters are just the castle ones, though. <laughs> I think... These are the points of the game where they actually kind of have to try with actual formats uh, in their map layout, and it kind of shows. <laughs> Formation can mean something in Fire Emblem, and it is, op is absolutely important to a lot of Fire Emblem maps. Uh, if you want a good example of, like, I guess, formation over map design, uh, Genealogy is a good example, because that game is all about just enemy formations coming at you, and you just have to deal with it. Though that being said, Genealogy's map design is still better than this game's map design. Yeah. Even if it's just visually. Even setting aside gameplay, the maps in Genealogy just look better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the open field maps of this game are just open fields. Even the fresh coat of paint of Echoes could only do so much. Uh, but yeah, just this is just a really fun chapter, even though it is probably one of the tougher chapters of the game. Uh, definitely one of the tougher chapters by this point. Um, I did better in playing it, you know, nowadays than I did when I first played it, because, oh boy, when I first played this chapter, you know, on my personal file, everybody was so tired at the end, but it's one of those situations where I did actually think it was more satisfying because of that. Like, I got to the end, and I made it, nobody died, or, you know, got knocked out of the fight, I was playing casual mode, not gonna pretend I wasn't, but yeah, just, <laughs> nobody enjoyed being here in-universe, but... It was a satisfying fight to the almost death for me. I mentioned, I think, when we first introduced stamina that, like, that is the main reason I like stamina in this game, because it ultimately doesn't matter. Like, the fact that characters were tired at the end of this chapter it didn't matter. Like, there's no map immediately following it. Low stamina wasn't a problem. But, like, it was just neat to see at the end, like, oh, hey! <laughs> I managed to pull through despite the fact that I did absolutely get my shit kicked in, and geez, I know that was a 57% Leon, come on. Yeah, I'll in your favor. 
It's fine, I crit Aurad. <laughs> I got 84 damage, it's fine. Yeah, so I guess other strategies for this chapter, um... Celica can probably heal for you, uh, even if you're not, like, power leveling or whatever. She gets healed pretty easily, so you might want to separate your healers into do two passages. It was a bit of a risk that I sent all of my flyers on left path. Though considering I had three flyers instead of two, thanks to the DLC, that did lighten the load a little bit, but... All of my physical units went this way, and, uh... Well, it means that, well, again, didn't send any healers the other way. It also meant that the hallways are just crowded now. There's just a whole lot of people over here, <laughs> climbing over each other. Yeah, I mentioned in an earlier map that choke point management is some of my favorite stuff to do in an intelligence systems game. A uh, hallway navigation considerably less so. You'd think they'd be similar, but it's so much more frustrating to just move your characters forward in a satisfying manner than it is to, like, maneuver around the defensive choke point in a satisfying manner. Yeah. I guess it's also because this is an offensive map rather than a defensive one. <laughs> like, technically we're in a choke point, and we are going to have to utilize these thin hallways when we get close to grief, but yeah, like, the fact that... We have to be the ones to sort our way through this is a bit of a pain. Perhaps it shouldn't be surprising that it's a lot less fun to assault a choke point than it is to defend a choke point. Maybe that's good game design, actually. <laughs> Dang, now I know how all these guys feel, and I don't care for it. Also, the one slight problem is, like... Valbar is always going to be your answer to who should be in a choke point, and that kind of limits it. Like, if Valbar is alive, if you need somebody on the defensive, it's Valbar. <laughs> it's always going to be Valbar. And the odds of Valbar taking enough damage that he has to retreat even for like a few turns is not great. Yeah, <laughs> he's just real good. What is wrong with these bone walkers? How is Valbar doubling them? <laughs> They're so slow. They are the heaviest bones. They drank too much milk. <gasps> All right, we got summoned from the milk dimension. Here we go. Got so much calcium. Jesus Christ, Saver, chill. <laughs> he will not. Ah, oh, jeez, that that is a hell of a summoner. So yeah, at this point, the problem is pretty much just. I need to draw in Grief because he's very dangerous, but there's just so many guys. The summoner will not stop summoning. <laughs> too many skeletons sending shivers down your spine. I know. They've got sticks and stones and they're breaking my bones. It's not good. Slowly but surely, we're making our way forward. Yeah, so next turn we'll be able to fight Grief. For now, I do want to take one more turn not being attacked by a Dread Fighter. They're called Dread Fighters because you see them and turn 180 degrees and leave <laughs> the other way. <laughs> why did you go on the person on the on the jars? Why, why did you do that? She can dodge and heal, she's immortal. Why did you go for Katria? Okay, that's right, no, Valbar is in space. Oh, your highness. My kingdom may fall today, but I'm gonna drag you all to hell with me! So anyway, dread fighters are fuckers. Uh, I did not do a lot of damage to him, because he's just got good defense. Uh, he got four attacks, because he's just that fucking fast. He can do two attacks, and also, he's faster than Valbar, unlike the skeletons. And also, you may have noticed at the beginning, he also takes half damage from mages because of a skill. 
a, a passive skill. So yeah, no, Dread Fighters are terrifying. When your mercenary line gets to Dread Fighter, you're good. <laughs> you're fine. Uh, Dread Fighters are some of the best classes in the game. Like, they're just good stat-wise. Not a big fan of the sprite, though. <laughs> Yeah, I can't quite tell what's going on in the sprite. They look they look like they've just got a whole ass shrine on their back. I have massive back problems. Amaterasu is going to kick your ass. I've been worshipping her all day. You're going down. You may be able to kill me, but Susano will not appreciate his shrine being destroyed. Uh, he's just trying to be a counter character. <laughs> In a manner similar to early Giorno, he's just trying to get you to hit him, but like it'll fuck you up instead. You'll get divine retribution. Uh, but yeah, like, I can't really think of any weaknesses off the top of my head. Like, they just have good stats. That's right, Dreadfighter has no weaknesses. <laughs> it's impossible to kill them, we're dead, we're, we're already done. But yeah, like... Uh, they already have pretty good resistance in comparison to most characters, in that they have sometimes any amount of it, but then they just have a skill that halves the damage. That's just always good. And you just think of the mercenaries we already have, like... Saber? Could benefit from that. Kamui? Absolutely. Grey? Oh, forget about it. And that's all the mercenaries we have, yeah. Uh, like, Dreadfighter is the one reason, like, if for some reason you don't want to make Atlas an archer, Mercenary isn't a bad option from what I hear, and like, again, it's Dreadfighter. So that makes sense, but yeah, like... He isn't really well-rounded as a cavalier, but he can at least do damage and make some use out of the, uh, stat bonuses from the, uh, mercenary class line. Yeah, and while Celica isn't exactly hurting for mercenaries, a fourth Dreadfighter isn't the worst thing in the world to have. Yeah, absolutely not. This just makes me so disappointed there's no Sky Pirate. <laughs> we just get to the end of this map and we're like, ah, oh, thank goodness we, we managed to defeat Grief and there's no other bandits. And then an anchor just falls from the sky. <laughs> also, I legitimately thought defeating Grief was the objective. <laughs> I mean, it is in a technical manner, but yeah, no, we gotta kill everyone. We actually have to deal with that summoner, son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn, we had to care about him. <laughs> Turns out these guys don't care about the payroll, because if they manage to win, they can just take everything Grief has a had amassed, and they're good. The problem is, what do you expect to do in this situation, my guys? Yeah, try summoning with 5 HP, idiot. I think the summoning only uses 2. <laughs> try summoning with 0 HP, idiot. The enemy gets access to better summoning magic for some reason. It's all they got. Also, jeez, May, you were just a monster that time. Katria did not have fun with that chapter. Still not as bad as when I first played this chapter, though. Oh, she was in rough shape in that one. I mean, I imagine Atlas had the least fun. Yeah, I don't remember if I even used him that much, but, you know. Katra was, like, at the point where hit her HP would have been halved if this were a dungeon. 
But with that, we can enter Greece Citadel. Now that it's empty of enemies. Atlas, did you manage to find your brothers? Yeah, they're safe. Everyone's safe. You're our savior, milady. From this point on, I am yours to command. You just say the word. Now, want me to bust the skulls of any of Greece's men we might have missed? N no, that's... Thank you, Atlas, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Why don't you go spend some time with your family instead? You sure? Well, all right. I'll do whatever you think's best. Oh, hey, uh, I guess this is our first time really talking, huh? I'm still in training, so I'm sure you could teach me a thing or two. This is my first visit to Valentia, but it's a really lovely place. Well, except for those terrors. They're totally horrible. But... I know their weakness. It's Falcon Knights. Yep, just send Falcon Knights against them and... Sport! No more terrors! Anyway, let me know if I can help out with that. Say, what do you do when you're not on a holy mission or whatever? Intense praying and studying, huh? And that's fun for you, is it? I see. Well, it's your job, so whether you enjoy it or not doesn't matter. See, me, I just love my job. Woodcutting's a blast. The same mountain can be real different day to day. They've got moods. They've all been pretty sad lately, though. Wait, you think Mila's responsible? That it's time we had a talk with her. Let's bust down those temple doors already. <gasps> Let's go kick God's ass. <laughs> Bet she doesn't lift. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Atlas is fantastic. Atlas is the one, one of the ones who just eat bags of raw flour, right? <laughs> oh, God. Hey, future me, but does he do it? I, I don't feel like looking it up right now. I just remember because you made that one <laughs> image of Atlas saying, like, oh, hell yeah, I can't wait to shout out on this. And one of the nuns saying, like, don't swear in front of a woman of the cloth. <laughs> oh, my bad. Heck yeah. Can't wait to shout out on this. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, Atlas will not leave you if you go north anymore, so we're good there. But we still have some more people to find. Sonia isn't technically one of the people we need to find, but we should find her. My goodness. You really are but a child. I'm sorry, who are you? Sonia. I assume you've at least heard the name. Ah, so that's you. We owe you thanks. Had you pursued us, we couldn't have defeated grief. Your restraint was much appreciated. I get the feeling you knew all along that's how I would react. Quite the clever one, aren't you? It's a bit infuriating. Still, I'll wager your friends are seldom bored. Maybe I'll just have to join up and see. If there's room for one more, that is. I'm certain you won't regret it. Alright, so anyway, here's Sonya. So in the original Gaiden, Sonya was actually the correct choice of characters to choose from. If you went with Dean, you were going with the much worse character. However, in Echoes, both of them are actually really close, and in fact, some people would actually say Dean is just a flat-out better choice. Now, we're not going to get into Dean too much this episode because he is dead, but we'll get to him in full later. For now, though, it is worthwhile mentioning kind of why you would choose him or Sonya. So first off, both of their base classes are kind of redundant compared to what we have in the entirety of Celica's party. We've already got mages, we've already got mercenaries, so neither one of them wins out for being niche. So the determining factor is more or less just, which would you prefer to have more of? It is worth mentioning now that Dean is actually a very solid choice for a mercenary. Despite the fact that we've had plenty of mercenaries already, he's still stand out. It's actually pretty impressive. So good for him. 
Now you might think then that Sonya was this fantastic character in the original Gaiden, and that's why you wanted to choose her over Dean, and she's okay. She had very consistent growths, it was all just 30s across the board except for Resistance which was zero, but you know how it be in Echoes. But no, in that respect, uh, Sonya did also get buffed. Uh, she has a much more interesting growth rate spread and winds up being pretty strong overall. No, the thing that is worse about Sonya in this game is the fact that she just has better competition. Mei and especially Bowie really weren't that good in Gaiden. So while Sonya didn't exactly have the most interesting stat spread, she probably had a consistency that neither of the other mages would achieve. Kind of the safety option. Now, however, if you look at Sonya's growth rates, compared to Mei and Bowie, she's just kind of middling, which isn't necessarily bad in of itself. In most cases, her growth rates are better than one of the characters, but either on par or worse than the others. Uh, for example, she's not actually as strong as Mei, who just hits real hard, but she has the same attack growth rate as Bowie. So, in a way, she still kind of has a consistency to her. It's just, she doesn't really stick out in any way in comparison to either Mei or Bowie. She just has a bit of trouble standing out in comparison to either of them. And really, the only stat that she has that has a better growth rate than either character is resistance. Which is still very low and won't frequently get points. So yeah, again, she's not bad, she just has competition now. And again, without going over Dean, Dean went from being a particularly bad mercenary to being one of the best mercenaries. It's kind of impressive, actually. Clearly somebody noticed that poor Dean just got screwed over in Gaiden and decided, all right, we're going to make him less garbage. So in terms of other things Sonya has going for her, really the only thing I can think of is that she gets Excalibur, which is fairly rare amongst Celica's party, especially amongst characters that are actually useful as mages. In fact, I would say the only character who is useful as a mage and has Excalibur is pretty much Bowie. So she kinda has that going for her. That being said, I don't know if anybody would consider Excalibur a determining factor in whether or not they'd choose a character. I mean, it's good, but I don't think it's that good. I mean, there are other good spells that people get. So yeah, in terms of gameplay, Sonya's not the correct choice anymore. So you may have well gone for Dean, and that wouldn't be a bad idea. The other thing that's worth noting is that Sonya is Jenny's only support partner, so if you care about that, then that might help your choice. Dean's only support option is Jesse, but Jesse also has other support options, so he's not left in the dust if you kill Dean. And of course, if you're going by personality, Sonya still wins out in that she has a personality. Sorry, Dean. Whoever's in charge of stat balancing liked you. The writers, maybe not so much. Oh, fuck this guy. Oh, hey, it's Alessio. Again. <laughs> Remember him? So yes, we sold him Coral, which he was going to give to Desai, but then we killed Desai. <laughs> and now he's here. <laughs> I actually really do like the side quest. So yeah, we keep killing all the people he had business connections with. <laughs> Alessio is the worst. He keeps trying to make deals with the people we're trying to kill. And we're just ruining his day because we killed them first. God, how is this not a Yakuza sub story? <laughs> Kiryu keeps running into a guy who's trying to sell things to all the Yakuza bosses he's inadvertently killing and beating the shit out of. <laughs> All right, but we'll just get to the end of this and then we'll recruit Kiryu.
All right, well, uh, I'm glad we could smooth things over with your business partners. Um, here's the Steel Lance. Uh, I don't know which boss you're working for now, but uh, I do look forward to killing them. Though we only have the one Steel Lance, so I can't give you any more. I guess we'll have to continue that later. Yeah, that's kind of the point of being a thief, <laughs> Celica. <laughs> you need stuff at any cost. Well, if you're so lucrative, why don't you bother paying for repairs? Selica's just judging, and then picking up this yogurt. Ah, uh, these are health-conscious bandits. I mean, with all the beer, yeah, probably. The jail cells are a bummer. We don't want to go down there. seems to be it for this room. I guess I'll get you more steel lances later or whatever. Alright, so we've got one character here. I owe you thanks beyond measure for saving me. My name is Irma, and I serve at the Temple of Mila. Or did, I suppose. In truth, this place has been my only home for many a long year. I fear greatly what may have transpired at the temple. So you're an attendant to Mila? Interesting. We're actually making our way to the temple right now. Is that so? Then, might I ask... Uh, by the mother! Are you... No, you couldn't be. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, forgive me. It's just that you bear a striking resemblance to Lady Liprica. Liprica? That's my mother's name. <gasps> then it's true! You're her! You're Princess Antiz! Mila be praised! You're alive! Are you saying you know my mother? Please, you... you must tell me anything you can about her. I never had a chance to know her, you see. It would be an honor, your highness. Where shall I begin? Like myself, Lady Liprica was a sister in the service of Mother Mila. But all that ended once King Lima's royal procession arrived at the temple. Lady Liprica's beauty caught his eye, and she was stolen away in the night. He took her to his castle and forced her to join his seraglio of countless brides. Despite the luxury, I expect life in the castle proved most difficult for her. She soon took ill, and left this world shortly after bearing your highness. <sighs> Mother... I'm so very sorry, Princess Antis, but I would implore you to spare your tears. Lady Liprica thought only of your health and happiness until her final breath. Lady Liprica also left something for you, Your Highness. For me? Aye, milady. It is the circlet that proves your royal standing. She asked that it be given to you once you were of age. A circlet? You can't mean the royal crown. Surely my mother had cause to hate the monarchy above all else. I fear I know not what her intentions were, milady. Nor have I the means of asking now. But, your highness, I know a time will come when your mother's heart grows clear to you. <laughs> the circlet is stored in the temple vault. I shall make my way there now. I must tell everyone that her highness Antis has returned to us. I will await your arrival at the temple. May Mila's blessing be upon you always. Alright, well that was fairly important. So, anything else in this room where we can- can we just move on to the other dungeon? <laughs> really looking at those dirt piles. Surely there must be something in this dirt, I said, but there was nothing. Yeah, no, not much to this room, so... Just the drinking water and dirt. <laughs> See you in dungeon one, everyone. Okay, how come Irma was female, but Estes girl? <laughs> it's a mystery to everyone. Hella! <laughs> Katria! Est! Oh, I'm so glad you're safe! Do you have any idea how much worry you've caused us? 
I'm sorry, Pella, but I... I... I was so scared! Katria! What? Hey! Stop this at once, Est. You're not a child anymore. Can't I be the kid sister just this once? After everything I went through? But it's not just this once. That's the problem. You're never anything but the kid sister. That is totally not true. Enough, you two. We're reunited for five minutes and already you're at each other's throats? Honestly. <laughs> oh, Celica. I apologize for the scene my sisters caused. Don't be silly. I'm just glad the three of you are all right. We wouldn't be if you hadn't helped us. There's no way Katri and I could have done this by ourselves. Thank you, Celica. Truly. Thanks so much for saving me. My name's Est, by the way. I was kidnapped by pirates in Arcanea and brought here. I'd really like to hurry home, but... Well, it wouldn't be right to run off before thanking you for your help. I'd like to fight with you if you'll have me. What do you say? All right, so now that we've rescued Est, we have Est in the party. And also, the other Pegasus sisters will also go north, much like Atlas. They won't abandon us anymore, which is good, because we need them <laughs> if we actually wanted to get into the temple. All right, so, hey, now that we've got a whole lot of new characters to... <laughs> future me talk about them. Oh, you mean I was supposed to wait to do Sonya and Est at the same time. Uh, <laughs> uh, whoops. Well, anyway, we can talk about Est now, at least. So, for those of you who aren't well-versed in Fire Emblem, Est is prominent in that she has an archetype named after her. Throughout the series, there are characters who join late at a low level, and seem like they're pretty bad. However, their growth rates are generally extremely good, so if you're able to raise them amongst the terribly deadly foes, comparatively speaking, then they actually turn out to be some of the best characters in the game. Now, depending on what Fire Emblem game you're playing, this might be pretty tricky. Echoes, however, there's no shortages of places to grind, including DLC. And considering just how many characters you're allowed on a given map, there's not really a downside to having to train up Est. See, unless you're in a dungeon, you're not choosing Est over a more well-trained character, and if you accidentally get her into hot water, then you have about 20 other characters to get her out of trouble. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but Echo's structure lends itself well to Est not actually being terrible to train. Don't get me wrong though, level 3 is very low, and those stats are not great for what you're facing this late into Act 3. But there are so many mechanics in place that let you kinda just raise Est without too much issue, that really the only problem you would have would be to just send her into a huge swarm of enemies on her own without any sort of backup plan. But why would you do that? You see she's level 3. You should know not to mess around with that sort of thing. Regardless, I've been talking about Est as an Est-type unit so far, but how does she stack up against some of the other Pegasus Knights? Namely, her sisters, because I'm not gonna involve the DLC character too much. So, this isn't quite a Sonya situation, because, on one hand, a few of her growth rates are sort of in between Paula and Katria. She's faster than Paula, but slower than Katria, but she's also stronger than Katria, but weaker than Paula. Not only that, her HP growth rate isn't great, so chances are, if you're not careful even when she does improve, it might still be a bit easy for enemies to knock her out of the sky, and you don't want to overuse skills. That being said though, even her in-between stats are pretty good, and she also excels in both luck and defense. And resistance, but not by much, but you should know that by now. Anyway though, yeah. 
Her luck is far better than Katria's, and she doesn't even need a ring for that. She just needs a few levels, and she'll probably get plenty of luck. Ironic considering her whole character arc in this game is about her lack of luck, but whatever. And her defense, which is also pretty solid for a Pegasus Knight. You also probably want to consider the fact that Paula, Katria, and Est uh, all need to be deployed if they want to make use of the Triangle Attack skill, which is not a necessity, but it does help. It isn't a bad reason to keep Est off the bench. It's just, on those rare occasions where there is a bench, I think Est shines enough, even without that skill, that you're gonna want to keep her off it anyway. But high crit rate does sweeten the deal, doesn't it? Alright, so anyway... Does S have a named item, like some of the other characters? Uh, she does not now. I could have sworn she had some, like, sort of drinking implement. Are you sure there's no S's flask? <laughs> God. You know what? <laughs> Long way around to get to that, but... Thumbs up to that one. <laughs> I have nothing but respect, you bastard. Alright, so we talked about the characters <laughs> next time on Fire Emblem Echoes. The fuck? Oh, uh, well, I guess since we've got Sonya, we might as well peer into an alternate dimension to see what could have been. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>